<laughs> I just realised how silly this looks. Like, I, I, I do it, and then, yeah, sure, I do it, but like, there's somebody else here, it's like, I realise, like, I'm self-conscious about how I look. Anyway. Yeah, I suppose I spend all my afternoons sat in a room talking to myself. Yeah. When, it, when you think about it, it does seem rather odd. Yeah. <laughs> Right, start. Hello everyone, my name is Jocelyn, you may call me Joy, and in this very special video, I have a very special guest. Would you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm X, and I am a non-binary beer reviewer. Thank you. So, um, yes, the um, I'll put your channel description thing in my description box. So that you may find beer dog reviews and um, we're going to have a little bit of a discussion, a little bit of an interview in the first of what I hope to be many interview type videos uh, with people across all different types of walks of life. But because um, X here has made a video about coming out, I thought it'd be really great to talk about that and also... Um, they had the great idea of bringing their channel to me too. So <laughs> let's let's start with that and then we can chat over a nice drink. Oh, begin with beer. That's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. Oh, I could introduce this beer the way I do on my channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way that your videos look, I mean I've I've noticed that you do a very specific kind of order. Methodical. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the best way to do it then. There's one for you. Thank you. Right, today it's from London Beer Factory. It's a New England Pale called Jungle Trip. Coming in at 5.3%. So you uh, look at the label first. I always have a look at the artwork. Yeah. Obviously artwork isn't any indicator of how a beer tastes, but I tend to find often if a brewery is going to put time and effort into their design, often they put time and effort into what's inside the can. Yeah. So, once you've gone through what's on the can, the most important thing is getting into a glass. Yay. Now, obviously with pails, you might think of those stuffy old world style beers with Kent Golding's hops and the malty and bitter. Sure, yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> but a New England pale, you can see the difference in colour. Straight away. Ooh, okay. So, as you can see, it's a, it's a hazy, well carbonated beer. Yeah. That's what you call straw coloured. It it kind of looks a bit like apple juice. Yeah. Yeah. And you get some which are really thick and bright orange, so it looks like mango juice or things like that. And you can see it's you know it's got a good solid finger of quite clean white head. And your head can range from anything from a nice clean white to a rich coffee mocha. Yeah. Or even a chestnut head. And when you hold it up to the light, you can see the, the different haze as it goes down and with a yeah. light bleed through at the base. It, it does It does um, sort of differ depending on which glass yeah. shape we've got. <laughs> so, once you've had a look at it, you want to see what it smells like. Mm. So what aromas do you get from that? Citrusy. Yep. Um, fruity. Pineapple. Yeah. Everyone picks up different aromas anyway. Good way to guess what aromas you might get. And this one doesn't have it, I don't think, is when you look at the hop varieties, no, it doesn't say. Uh, obviously with citra, you're going to get a citrusy hop. Yeah. A citrusy flavour. Simcoe, you often get a pineapple aroma. 
and mosaic, you get a piney aroma. Okay. They're the three main American hop styles. But if you can get citrus from a New England, that's always a good sign. It means it's not skunked. And that's when the hops die in the beer and you get no flavour. Okay. Or you get a really bad diazotol flavour. So if you don't smell that skunkiness, chances are you're not going to have a skunked beer. Okay. That's going to happen more often when bottled beers which are in a white or a green bottle. Because as it sits on the shelf in the shop, the light's the getting light gets to, it, to it and it's killing the hop. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm. It's quite citrus heavy. Yeah. Blood orange. See, everybody's palate's different. It's it's still it's still kind of um, like fruity yeah. and juicy and very like it's a pale ale, so yeah. of course it's going to taste quite light yeah. as well. And you you should be picking up a quite a piney bitterness on the back end. Almost a resinous character. You're not going to get grass. It doesn't. Notes. It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, yeah, it doesn't taste like a, a like a lagery no. kind of beer. It's a very different sort of light. Um, With lagers and pilsners, what you're often going to be getting is lemon or lime and pepper. You don't get any bitterness at all. That's why lagers for me are a very summer drink and you don't want them too strong because yeah. you're not going to get any flavour at all. Whereas that one, you should hopefully get a few different flavours. Yeah, it strikes you immediately with the with the um, like fruitiness, mm. and then afterwards there's there's I don't know how to describe the aftertaste really. Um, you know more about the technical terms yeah. than I do, but uh, yeah. With the bitterness, because it is quite a heavily bitter beer, especially for a pale, but it's not a what I call a smack you in the face bitterness. Mm. Which, if you're going to have a yeah. West Coast IPA, those are the ones which use things like Mosaic and Columbus hops, and usually slightly darker malt. That's tiny grassiness at the front, and really strong bitterness at the back end. Whereas that's a more subtle. It's very subtle, yeah, but it's it's a, it's really nice, really. yeah, yeah. And body-wise, because it's not a New England IPA, it's going to have a slightly softer, not quite as thick body. It's not as thin as a lager or a traditional British beer, mm. but it's not going to be as thick as one of those, what you call a, we call them a juice bomb, where it's, it's basically like drinking orange juice or mango juice right. or something. Right, yeah. You don't, it's sort of halfway between the two. So. Yeah. Cool. So now that we've done the taste testing portion of the video, <laughs> um, would, would you, like, the thing that I've been wondering is, would you call yourself a sommelier? I looked this up on Google and it couldn't decide whether that was exclusive for wine or not. There is a term for... <laughs> A sommelier for beer. I can't remember what it is, but I would say I don't know enough about beer to be able. There, there's a course you can go on and all sorts, but I know what I like. Mm. I can pick out the different hot flavors and characters, and 
it's all about personal taste. Yeah. I'm not. I wouldn't want to go down the. Well, we say some AA because I can't remember the right the actual word. Is that that's always more about the science behind it? Yeah. You're getting this flavour because. This hop has been added at this time during the brewing process, rather than in the dry hop, or in the mash, or in the whirl. The fact is that you it... know that is still, <laughs> you know, a great deal more than most people. Everything I've picked up that I do on my channel, I've learned by watching some of the other beer reviewers. There's many out there. I'd say there's only a handful of really good ones. But by watching those people, some of whom I'm, I've now become very good friends with, I've learned more. Myself. Yeah. That's, that's, I like that. That's great. People coming together on the internet. Like, just, oh, you don't see that enough. If it wasn't for the pandemic, it never would have happened for me. Oh. So... Leading into the the um, other part of our of, of our sort of conversation, um, is that what helped you to come to the conclusion that you were non-binary? I would say so, because um, I know a lot of people ended up going through the same sort of thing where they had the time to reflect on their lives yeah. and then came out as a result. Because we spent a good nine months, certainly, where all we could do was go to work and go home, and that was it. You do have that extra time to find yourself, if that's the right way of putting that. Mm -hmm. Realise yourself, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, on, on your channel, it is mostly beer reviews, yeah. like what we had... Like, what we've just done but there was that one from yeah. two years ago where you came out to the public yeah. on the video <laughs> um and i've i've watched it twice now um once because i was like oh my god like i really want to support you yeah. and the second time because i was like actually putting together yeah. the questions and everything <laughs> um and both times i watched it with like the second hand anxiety for you, like because I mean, I think because it's always such a struggle to come out. Do you think that that's what was happening or? Um, I'm not sure. I'd already had a long, long chat with my partner mm. and my friends at work after that I think it was a about three months after I came out to family and friends that's when I did the video yeah and I think it was more I got used to speaking in front of the camera obviously anyway because I'd, I'd had my channel for over a year by that yeah. point so it just felt the easiest way to do things and like I say because I'd already you know, spoken to friends and family and got past that initial fear, if you like. Yeah. It made it a lot easier. I still, I still, like, I can still sense the, like, the trepidation yeah. there. Because um, it's always hard yeah. coming out, no matter what you're coming yeah. out as. Like, because I, I've known you for a very long time. Yeah. We both met pre non-binary so <laughs> um the process of coming out once is hard enough yeah. the process of coming out again yeah. <laughs> yeah just makes it that much yeah definitely yeah and it 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 does get easier but it's sort of it's always nerve-wracking yeah. at least that's what i think yeah. yeah especially i think in this day and age where there's so much I think discussion is going to be the politest way I can put it <laughs> about sexual identity and gender identity. Yeah. Particularly across the sea. Mm. 
Well, you never know how some people are going to react. Yeah, I would say, unfortunately, in in like the most <sighs> out of all the places that are the most westernized, developed countries, the UK and the US are the worst. Yes. Um. Obviously, we're not getting thrown off of buildings or, or like, no. you know, stoned to death. Like, there's there's some countries that still do yeah. that. But, um, yeah, it's it's not very receptive. Um, like, when you think politically, like, we have a government, we have a, a prime minister who is transphobic, or at least says transphobic yeah. things and supports transphobic policies. Um in the US, there's uh, nearly 500 transphobic and anti-LGBTQ bills yeah. that have been proposed in the past six months. And the fact that our, even, you know, in this country, our own foreign office is advising people not to travel to Florida. Mm. Yeah. One of the biggest tourist destinations for British people. Yeah. That says a lot. It's it, I, I'm I'm kind of like watching this whole Florida DeSantis versus Disney thing with it's it's kind of like an abject horror, but you can't look away from it because either one who wins, it's not gonna be great. You kind of want to support Disney because they're like against. DeSantis, who is uh, like objectively evil yeah. at this point, but if they take over, then it's just a win for capitalism, and yeah. I don't really want that. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned um, like researching and soul searching about what it means to be non-binary. Yeah. Um, would you care to elaborate? <laughs> oh, um, I was trying to so, a couple of years ago now. So. Um, obviously, as a YouTuber, mm. I watch a lot of YouTube. Yeah, same. So there's a few particular people that I follow. And even before I knew what I was, they'd been talking about various different things. Two of the ones that I follow are both trans men. And they've done some fantastic videos on well, all sorts of different sexuality issues and gender identities. And it, that, I think, is what helped me to realise or come to terms with what I, what and who I was, if you see what I mean. Yes. Yeah. You know I, mean? I found the same sort of thing. When I was doing research for my college LGBT plus group back in 2016, this is how I found that I was really interested in American politics because that's the same time that um, the, uh, like the, the Supreme Court had just legalized gay marriage for across the country. Um, and then there was the whole like Trump versus Hillary presidential run and uh, Again, looking at that with abject horror, going, what the hell are you doing, America? Stop! Um, but, yeah, I also found um, a, a lot of LGBT plus YouTubers that I watched, and some of them had experiences that I thought, oh, well, that's just like me. And, oh, well, that's not quite like me, but it's sort of similar and this this non-binary person is is sort of like almost a mirror image of me because they they were assigned female at birth and i'm assigned male at birth and sort of ending up in the same sort of headspace like what so yeah like watching other people yeah, and I seeing think that's a lot of it's what it's when somebody says something and you think that's exactly what i've been thinking mm. it makes you realize a little bit more yeah I think that's why people are so desperate to try and suppress 
us from speaking out as well because it's not like we go around transing people <laughs> but the more that the public knows the more likely it is that people are going to switch on and realize oh that's what that is yeah. my my biggest argument has always be when people say oh there's so many more trans people than there used to be or in the early 90s there's so many more gay people than there used to be Oh, it must be the chemicals turning the frigging frogs gay, obviously. And of course, it's exactly the same when teachers in schools stopped forcing left-handed people to use yes. the right hand. The graph is exactly the same yes. shape and the same curve for everything. It's not that there's more of one thing or another. It's that people can be who they are. Yeah. So as things become more accepted, you're going to see a spike and then it will level off. Yeah. That's the same with any population, with any different trait, whatever it may be. Yeah. Left-handedness, green eyes. Whatever whatever is being suppressed yeah. and then stops being suppressed. Yeah. Um, so in... Because we're, we're roughly the same age as well. So we both lived through Section 28. So that was a big contributing factor to us not being able to access any kind of information about anyone being gay, anyone being trans, um, like the, the sort of gender conversations have been able to like continue and expand. Yes a lot since that ended like the the shocking difference the shocking contrast i noticed between when i left school as a 16 year old and then worked in a school as a 35 year old very different to how accepting it become in that sort of almost 20 years i think that's the thing there's not you know drag queens making children trans mm. it's that youngsters these days have that knowledge and that ability to find knowledge which we weren't allowed to have so yeah it's easier for them to realize who they are at an earlier age um so you on on your video you gave a very slow measured explanation about mm. what being non-binary means for you and I think it's important to like reiterate that it is a little bit different for everyone yeah. um but has like because this video was you made two years ago um has your what well, has has your sort of experience changed has your definition changed for yourself now um I wouldn't say changed as such, evolved slightly maybe. Yeah. So, uh, originally, I was thinking as more on the demi-male side of things, but I think now it's more completely agendered. Right. So, but so it, again, that's more a uh, finding more out about myself. As I get older. Yeah. And two years older, but... But still, a lot can happen in yeah. two years, yeah. And, I mean, you you also reiterated that you are still the same yeah. person with the same interests. Yeah. You still like metal music. Yeah. You, you know, you still like beer. <laughs> um, like... How how much has this gender label changed you, would you say? Changed me? Yeah. Not at all, I would say. It's like taking off a mask, maybe. Changed the way some people think about me, possibly. Um, I mean, even now there's people that can't use a correct name for someone. Mm. Mm -hmm. And whether that be when you're at work or when you're doing some of your 
my my other main hobby showing dogs i keep my dead name for that because that's it's a much more complicated issue on that side of things for a lot of very different reasons okay mostly most people that are in dog shows are very old yeah i was i was gonna <laughs> i was i was thinking that there might be some sort of snobbery uh within that world um yeah and that that's not very conducive yeah. to acceptance yeah. particularly when probably 70 percent of that entire world are all gay anyway really yeah. Or it's a very gay heavy okay. sport. I don't mean with heavy gays. <laughs> there are some. <laughs> I'm not gonna name any names. <laughs> I can think of a few heavy gays in the dog world. But... Okay. <laughs> Tea. Tea and beer in the same video. <laughs> Oh, surprising then that you think that there wouldn't be that much acceptance. Because I, I would imagine that it would be, um, like you said, older people, yeah. more conservative people. Um, but there's there's a lot of gays. There's a lot of gay yeah. energy. So that that's like shatters my sort of illusion because I don't know anything about the dog showing world. So, like a lot, a lot of it is an understanding thing to people. Right. But there's plenty out there that. Except me, for who I, who and what I am. Yeah. But they can't get their head around certain things. And that yeah. is generally a, an age thing with a lot of them. Yeah, it's it's super annoying when I find people like that because it's just like this is this is still a part of me. Like, it's great that like some people some people are accepting without the understanding. It, great that there's the acceptance yeah. there but um without the understanding yeah. they're more likely to get things wrong like pronouns and everything very true it's very hard to explain to someone who hasn't had this kind of like these gender feelings um or or anything sort of comparable to that so like, how, how do you deal with that? Do you just stay in the closet to some people then? Um, no. Because I, I would say, once you've come out to someone, you shouldn't have to do it again and again every time you see them. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if they get things wrong, certain the, the name, I'm not too peed off about all the time depending who it's coming from but if if somebody was going to make a a particularly transphobic comment or something without even if they're, they're not thinking they don't mean it they're just it's just sort of fallen out i correct them there and then yeah but it's like i said but the main thing isn't the worst thing in the world because because i judge as well i I use my old name for my official dog stuff. Yeah. So they will still know me as that. Yeah. But a lot of the, particularly people that I see on a more regular basis, people that are, that come to our club, our dog club, quite a few of them, correct name, just wrong pronouns. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, the small victories yeah. there. I'll about to say one thing and then forget. Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh, I meant... It gets kind of awkward. It so, really does. But it is like a little step further each time. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I feel like I hate correcting people yeah. about my pronouns because everyone... Um, at work uses she her mm. pronouns for me and I uh, with customers I'm not even gonna bother but with like work colleagues or people that I know well it's like mm, I have asked for 
this yeah. and I'm not going to ask again because why bother? I think <sighs> the thing about my job is I work for quite a large retail company. Yeah. We now have our pronouns on our name badges if we want them. Okay. And if you... If you've chosen a name which isn't the easiest to work out how you say it from how it's spelled, you can have a phonetic spelling on your name badge as well. Oh, okay. See, Not that's... that anybody looks at your name badge when... No, no. Um, I've so... still got customers that call me my old name all the time. So... And yet there's some. There's, a, there's an old couple I see once a week. Correct name every time. And... I think they're in their late eighties. So. I love that. I love that because it proves <laughs> that you're never too old yeah. to like change and learn new things. And, and the way I I try and describe it to people is, if Miss Smith got married to Mister Jones, you wouldn't yes. keep calling her Miss Smith. Yeah, she'd be Mrs. Jones. Or Mrs. Jones Smith. Or Mrs. Smith Jones. Yeah. But you, <laughs> when somebody gets married, you easily. Okay, the first month, sometimes you forget. Yeah. But you start remembering and you call them the married name, yeah. don't you? So, yeah. And that's the way I always try and explain it to people that aren't quite understanding. Because it's, it's something it that, works. yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of framework that's familiar. Yeah. That's really good. Okay, it's a cis heteronormative framework. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I... It I works. Uh, if I got married, I wouldn't change my name again, because that was a pain in the ass the first time around. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I know someone who has got married recently, and they did change their name, and um, I asked why, and they said mostly just because they want the same last name as their children, just to keep that simple. Yeah. It's like, okay, that makes sense. You know, so, so it... It strikes me as sort of an archaic kind yeah. of thing, like the woman becomes the man's property. But there are still some practical reasons to do that sometimes. And saying that I know plenty of cis het couples that have got married and they've never changed their name. Mm. It's it's what works for the individuals. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, so you didn't actually mention in your video about your new name or your pronouns like did you even know at that point that that's what you wanted at that point no i didn't start using my name until the, it was the year i came out mm. but it was when i went to bloodstock that year oh okay because my friend that i always go with hadn't been very well so i spent a lot of that festival on my own and i made friends with three people who I'm still friends with, and last year we went to Bloodstock with them again, and we're meeting up this year again. And when they asked me my name, it was X. Straight yeah. Away. I'd been thinking of a name for a while, and as soon as somebody asked me who I didn't know, that was it. I knew it was right. That's really cool. And they. They're never going to dead name me because they never knew me. Yeah, as that. yeah. I so. find I find that happens with more time that passes yeah. as well. You meet n more people that you don't have to then correct um, in that way. It's it's kind of the worst thing for me is when I uh, and this has happened like less and less frequently over the years, but in dreams. When I'm dreaming about the past, like my dead name comes up in in, in my head and I fucking recoil in horror. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it. That's that's the worst because it's like it's still there, living rent free. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's nicer the the longer that you go, the more people you will find. And you won't have to yeah. do that. Right. So, um, you said that if you had been born 10 years later, yeah. with the sort of more modern yeah. understandings and, and knowledge of gender theory, um, that you might have chosen hormone blockers. 
How do you feel about that now? Is that still yeah. true? Maybe if I was born 10 years later, it might not have been an option the way things are going mm. at the moment. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm very, very conscious and aware of the fact that no matter what I do, I'm a very masculine looking person. I'm yeah. short, I'm fat, I've got a big beard, which grows overnight. For someone who's quite short, I am slightly broad-shouldered. None of that's going to change because it would be too late to change it now anyway. Yeah. Apart from major invasive surgery, which I don't want. And even then, there's... like so, there's you can't, you can't do. Yeah, you, you can't, like... <sighs> Is there such a thing as a shoulder reduction? I don't <laughs> think no. so. Because I don't... I don't want to be completely feminine. I don't want to be completely masculine. I've got a list of a few different people who sort of give me some form of gender envy. And a lot of those are cis males. Right. In a weird way. But they have an but androgynous we're, yeah, look. Yeah, we're talking about day Wednesday 13. Bill Vallow, circa 97 to 99. You know, people like that. Yeah. But then there's people like Mae Martin as well. Who, no matter how you look at them, you can probably tell that they were born female. Yeah. Slightly. But there's no clear one way or the other when you look at them. And that's what I would have preferred to end up looking like, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Um, with proper sort of research and and knowledge at an earlier stage maybe maybe like maybe hormone blockers maybe not have been the solution yeah. but it would have given you time to think about what yeah. and that's all hormone blockers are for yeah yeah like what you what you want your body to essentially look like and be I I know I would have appreciated that time as well. And again, with the sort of my current understanding, I probably would have made a different decision to what I made, you know, years ago. Not that I had any real knowledge that there was an option. Like, because I thought at the time, there's trans women who do everything, they do hormones, they do surgeries, and they literally transition from, you know, one one sexual um, sort of form into another. I didn't know there were a lot of different ways to transition, a lot of different options that you can have this surgery or that surgery yeah. or no surgery or hormones or no hormones or this this treatment that treatment like i had no idea of the range of things that were like available yeah. and like even now i'm still kind of struggling with certain decisions um something that my audience probably will not know is that i have started taking estrogen again but this time in the form of patches instead of pills because last time it didn't work out for me and this, so far, it's only been like a month and a half, so I haven't really seen a lot of changes yet, but um, so far it's, it <coughs> feels better than the last time. So there's that. And yeah, it, it, it's about choosing your own yeah. destiny almost how, how much one person does or does not transition does not and cannot invalidate someone else's identity and how much they decide to yes yeah that's the way i've always looked at it so. in your eye trans medicalists yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say, let's say that that had happened. Um, would you would you consider medical intervention now? Or 
probably not now. No. no. I think, apart from wanting to lose a lot of weight, I'm fairly comfortable with okay. myself as it is. Yeah. I, 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 prefer I, have not not, to... I have the same kind of feeling. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really a gender thing, that's just a... I would prefer not to be able to grow a beard in four hours, but... See, there are things you can do about that. As I had mine lasered off. You'd have to have a hell of a lot more sessions than me, though. That's the thing. <laughs> That's it. You know, other area, there's always... Shave, wax, cream, whatever. Mm. So if I do want to be slightly less masculine one day, I mm. can do, because I can just shave everything off if I want to. True. Or not if I don't. And there's there's still some very, very feminine people in the world who have full-on beards yeah. as well. Or, so... or whopping great monobrows, Selma Hayek. My God, more tea! <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> great, great artist, but <laughs> yeah, Penelope Cruz had to get little hairs attached to her forehead to play her in the film. Okay. <laughs> okay. Random trivia, but you know. Are you thinking of Frida Kahlo? I am actually Selma Hayek. Not Selma Hayek. <laughs> but Selma Hayek does have a big monitor. Well. <laughs> yes, Penelope Cruz played Frida Kahlo. Yeah. But Selma Hayek has also played Frida Kahlo. I thought that's who. Right. I thought that's who you meant because I thought I I I know that. Or has. Or was it the other I one? Thought, I thought I thought that played? Selma Hayek was the one that played Frida Kahlo. I know Penelope Cruz has played. A Hispanic artist who did have a lot of more hair where she should have had. I can't remember who it was now, one because it was Selma Hayek that played Frida Kahlo, wasn't right. it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly off topic, but you know. This derailed quickly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way my brain doesn't work. <laughs> I think one thought and then it leads to another and another without thinking. Only mildly insane. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, right, okay, fine. <laughs> I'll believe you. Um, so, <laughs> back on to... <laughs> so, in the video, well, f like, on the video itself, you received a lot of supportive yeah. comments from your audience, from people in the comments yeah. section. Um, I am wondering, like, because... I am also somebody who creates content for YouTube. I have received comments in the past and they're not all positive. <laughs> was there any sort of negativity that you got? Did you have to like cut some, like delete some negativity no, there? I have to say in the uh, what, three and a half years I've been making videos, the only negative comment I've ever had was... When I said I liked a beer, somebody said it was horrible. Oh, okay. That's literally the only <laughs> negative comment I've ever had on one of my videos so far. Not an invitation for people to go and leave me loads, but... <laughs> so... They will get deleted, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like... But on that I... video, nothing. Oh, excellent. And you think the beer community are very predominantly straight white male... Mm area of society and nothing at all I love that it is surprising but nice yeah cool like so and, and, if you want to come out do it to beer drink yeah <laughs> <laughs> they might be a little too pissed to care yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah fine whatever yeah. great <laughs> oh no that's really great and like, you know, someone someone who does disagree with you about a beer, yeah. like that's obviously a far cry yeah. from any actual um, 
sort of personal attack yeah. or anything like that. You're going to burn like, in hell, you freak. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, yeah, we already knew that yeah. anyway. Like, it's, it's... <sighs> So... <laughs> but it wasn't aimed at you, just to be No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'll see you there, <laughs> but... <laughs> it's not a race to get there, though. So, um, so yeah, your, like, your bottom line in that video was just acceptance. Yeah. Um, is, is that, like, the most important thing to you? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Acceptance. No nasty, horrible people. If you can't understand, at least try. Yeah. No idea where that stopped. I've been keeping an eye on it. Um, but that's the first time I noticed that it stopped. I think it's because we um, got to 40 minutes and then it just... <laughs> so, yeah, so I think the fact that your community had nothing but positivity, you know, sort of shows that that's... that message of acceptance is... You know the thing that the thing that you cultivate. You know. Oh, fucking sirens. And I, th I think generally, the people that I've made friends with in the beer tube community, mm. whether that be other reviewers, um, brewery owners, or just people who watch the videos. We've all formed a community together in a way as well. Yeah. Where people talk to each other. Pe people that have never met have made friends on Facebook and the like. And then sometimes they go to a beer festival and they meet that person. Okay, and they yeah. And they become friends in real life, as it were. I think that's what has helped me as well. Because everyone does get on. There's obviously some that don't, but... If everybody got on in every community, it would be a very odd and disturbing world. Yeah, yeah. More odd and disturbing than it actually is. Cool. Okay, I think I think that's everything. I'm gonna check how well the last thing sort of did, and um, if we need to add anything more but I think that's it so thank you very much for being my first interviewee on my channel it's um, been a pleasure and uh, thank you for sharing this has been, this been lovely and as we say over on Beer Dog Reviews don't forget to like, <laughs> comment and subscribe down there and until <laughs> next time happy drinking cheers <laughs> And as I like to say on this channel, non-binary is valid. God damn it. Bye.